It has been 153 days since Chris last begged for money, 12 days since Chris last claimed to be Jesus Christ, and 315 days since Chris has been in custody. Welcome to the Chris Chan Update, my name is Gibby. I know it's been a while since we've had one of these, and in fact, this video is not going to just cover the month of May, it's also going to cover what's happened in June so far. Obviously, like the last couple of videos since Chris's incarceration, this is going to focus on the letters that he's been sending out, as those are really our only glimpse into what's happening in his life. The first thing we're going to talk about is a correspondence that happened between Chris and Kenneth Engelhart. Despite the fact that Kenneth had previously said that he was done contacting Chris, it appears that they are still in letter correspondence. As you might know if you've watched my last couple of videos, you know that Chris spent a couple of months in a mental hospital, but he has now been returned to jail. During his time in the mental hospital, he did not write any letters, so we kind of have a couple month gap where we don't know what happened. Uh, so we're going to see if we can learn any information about that period or what Chris is doing, feeling, and thinking now from these letters. This first letter that Chris wrote to uh, uh, Kenneth actually is not a full letter. Kenneth did not post Chris's text, but instead just summarized it for us. So the source for this is Kenneth and has been posted on the quickie. So this is from May 28th, 2022, and is a summation of a letter received by Kenneth. Chris said, Do not publish or upload this entire letter online, Engelhart. Kenneth asked Chris on why he thought Jacob Sockness was responsible for COVID-19. Chris said, Jacob Sockness had cursed China, and that curse caused the virus to arise there. Jacob did in fact curse China. Jacob is a very big, uh... Let's say, believer in the rhetoric of Donald Trump, and so he believed that China was the cause of a lot of America's woes financially. For that reason, he hates China and cursed them using his magic demonic powers. That was before COVID, and so Chris, I guess, believes that that curse is what caused COVID to uh, begin there, and then, of course, spread to the rest of the world. Kenneth asked why Chris thought Hasbro caused some of the troubles. I guess the troubles are like COVID and the dimensional merge and Chris being arrested and stuff. Chris's answer. Hasbro has outsourced to a country nation in the vicinity of Russia and the war zone for the premature chronicling of MLPG-5. Okay, so I guess I guess the troubles is Russia invading Ukraine, which is caused by My Little Pony. So uh, Princess Twilight Sparkle, Celestia, and Luna, which are like the queens or the gods of the My Little Pony world, uh, they're personally an equestria of the C-197 half of our recombined universe and they're very unhappy about this scenario. So the princesses, the queens, the leaders of the My Little Pony world don't like that Hasbro is making their toys next to Russia. Apparently, Chris also mentioned how the Russia-Ukraine war is getting in the way of My Little Pony Generation 5 merchandise being successfully advertised and sold. I don't know if that means that Chris is justifying the war as a good thing or not. Engelhart does not explain. Kenneth asks Chris if he had an ancestor who may have fought in the Civil War, and Chris said, Maybe. Uh, Chris once again has stated that the dimensional merge is currently happening, and uh, the crux of his religion is that all trolls, haters, and just generally bad people will cease to exist. The word that he apparently used was evaporate. So once it's completed, all the good people will get to live with our OCs and fictional characters, and all the bad people will just cease to exist. Uh, apparently Chris's examples of this actually happening is that a bunch of people in North Korea are dying of COVID, which is apparently the same thing as trolls dying and being evaporated. He's saying that Ukraine beating the Russians is another example of this. He also mentions the sudden increase in monkeypox as a sign of the merge. He's going to make me read some Bible here now. Uh, he says that Revelations 15 and 16 are references to COVID, that Malachi 4 speaks of the burning of the toxics and some of California and others in recent months up to the present, and the new Earth mentioned in Revelations 21 is the recombined Earth of uh, Earth 1218 and C197, which are the combined universes in Chris's religion. Uh, so now I'm gonna have to search up those Bible passages, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about them. Bible story time with Gibby, the ex Sunday school teacher. Okay, so uh, this passage apparently refers to COVID. Revelations 15. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign: seven angels with the seven last plagues. Last, because with them God's wrath is completed. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God, and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Okay, so apparently the seven plagues in Revelations are... 
COVID, and monkeypox. And the, maybe that means there's gonna be five more. So I've actually read Malachi 4 before in these Christian videos. Um, and it's, it's just talking about uh, fire burning the land, and when Chris says that this is a reference to California, what he means is that it's a reference to the wildfires that will occasionally burn uh, throughout wide swaths of California. So uh, I guess that uh, those California wildfires are another sign of the oncoming apocalypse, because uh, Chris believes that the apocalypse, as stated in Revelations, is really just the dimensional merge. Alright, so now Revelations 21 is supposed to be a reference to the combined universes of uh, 1218 and C197. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their god and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So Chris isn't really saying anything important. I mean, Chris never says anything important, but what I mean is that he just has a very cursory reading of these Bible passages and then says, like, uh, yeah, uh, th this is the merge. This can be the merge. Nothing is in his lore states anything about, like, a city literally coming down from heavens, but also that's not really what the Bible's literally saying either. Uh, but it, it, the fact that he's using this in his little cult of religion, neo-spiritual Christianity thing, uh, is just another crazy person using the Bible to predict the end of days. Not that I was expecting this to actually be a sign of the oncoming merge, but, you know, I was hoping it would be more creative than this. And then apparently Chris proclaimed himself as God at the end, and said, I am the Avatar, Alpha, and Omega, and we gods and goddesses are saving the good and neutral individuals and burning away the toxics. So that was the letter to Kenneth Engelhart. But it's not the only letter we got. So a Twitter user by the name of Eels and Eggman has written to Chris in the past and has received letters from him. On May 17th, he tweeted about how he tried to send Chris a blank paper so that Chris could write more letters, but it was returned to him because you're not allowed to send inmates blank paper. It's actually for the same reason that you can't send inmates used books, and if you want to send them a book, it has to basically come new straight from a bookstore, and that's because you can, like, embed drugs in paper. You can, like, soak them in LSD or something. So on June 6th, Eels and Eggman got a response letter from Chris. Now, apparently what had happened is that Helena, who is someone that we've talked about on this channel a lot, she is the creator of Pikachu. She was actually developing a game about Chris Chan before uh, Chris's arrest. Sadly, it got canceled. Helena had written Chris a letter, and this is Chris's response. Helena did not send Chris the letter, but instead sent it to Eels and Eggman, who then forwarded it to Chris. So this response that we're getting is not to Eels and Eggman, it's to Helena, even though it's through Eels and Eggman, if that makes any sense. Now, before all of this, Chris actually tried to send a letter to Helena in early May, but it got rejected and sent back to him. So Helena did not receive this letter until after the next letter that we're going to read. So we're actually going to we're going to go back, and so I'm going to read this real quick. So uh, May 8th, dearest Helena, my apologies for taking this long to write you back, but further confirmations of foreknown details slash facts needed to happen up to this point. Anyway, you are already and have been in my divine employ as a prophet and apostle. I affirm that you should never conceal nor ignore your psychic and fortune-telling powers. Pikachu, on C-197's Earth, remains a valid prophet himself, and a harem member and friend who has been working tough and hard with us all in the events of the collective shift of all good, including you, neutral, faithful, enlightened, spiritual, good magics, and good psychics from 1218 Earth and C-197 Earth. You've been the part of Elijah from Malachi in the Old Testament. So, never stop being your powerful self, regardless of the temporary non-canonity non 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 of fanfictions in this timeline. Ugh, those paradox cleanups and counters. 
Uh, so Chris had previously said that because like everything happens in the fictional universe, no matter what, that fan fiction happens somewhere, somehow, uh, but he said that since his incarceration, fan fictions are not canon, and they're not happening in any form anywhere, because he's not there to basically go through them and, like, approve them. So he's apologizing to Pikachu for this, because she was a fan fiction writer of Sonic U. Now, of course, Sonic U is fan fiction of Sonic the Hedgehog and Pokemon, but we're not going to talk about that. We've even had to neutralize those that slipped in from the Sonic.exe dimension. Don't get me started on that. Aside from that, I have a few updates I wish for you, personally and directly, to share all mine on my behalf at present, please. So then, uh, Helena was supposed to post this for Chris. Greetings all, tis I, Jesus Christine Wesson Chandler Sonichu, thy lord, savior, and god. The collective shift with the portals and chaos rainbows still continues with the cosmic and timeline shifts and events. Have y'all been paying attention to the signs? How about these cold months of March, April, and May now? World War III still killing a number of toxic individuals in Ukraine and Russia? V-Day shall be more like Loser's Day for a good number in both countries. Anyway, you know common sense, and should obviously ignore the rumors from the haters, fakers, sinners, and toxics among ye on Kiwi and Onion to say the least. Red at night, sailors delight. Red at morning, sailors take warning. Hey, come on, let's hurry up and wait for minutes to hours in line. And so forth to emphasize what is false resonates clear for you to forget about them. I have no idea what any of that meant. Like, I, those are sayings, but I don't know why he's saying them. The temple is safe and protected. The payments are being made monthly, and it shall remain holy and safe without foreclosure, period. Stop rumoring for needless drama. That is all. Be safe and well. So Helena did not receive that before this next correspondence. So this next correspondence is the one that was used with uh, Eels and Eggman as the go-between. So, Helena wrote, Hello, Christine. I am Helena GF, the one that wrote before, or at least tried to. I also write and draw about Pikachu. You got taken away while I tried to send you letters. I didn't have a way to get the letters back. I am worried for you. I basically write to you because nobody is providing news about you. I saw your latest photo. It broke my heart. That's in reference to Chris's newest mugshot. After he returned from the mental hospital, there's a mugshot, uh, and if you compare it to his first mugshot, he lost a lot of weight and he's not smiling anymore. It broke my heart. The first picture, you look so confident, and now it looks like something happened. I can't help but cry for what happened. I catch myself audibly sobbing when I see an old video from before the incident. I want to believe you were just saying stuff to impress Bella. I want to believe you did not do that. In other news, Noel got the first batch of Chris Chan's silver coins sent to England stolen by someone. All of the first batch. Also, Dylan, the one that leaked your DMs? His career crumbled and is now being made fun of people and had to delete videos, rebrand, and then finally leave the internet. Uh, for some context, English is not Helena's first language, so there might be some uh, odd grammatical stuff in here, like his career crumbled and is now being made fun of people. I did not know that. I did not know that Dylan left the internet. There are rumors that after a month, today is Mother's Day in the USA, he is going to come back. Either way, he and Taylor split and she spoke so much dirt about him. I was in Rogue the Internet Man's Discord channel. Both Gibby and Dylan's servers got deleted. I don't know why Dylan deleted his server, but I deleted mine because I was being attacked by, like, five losers from the Kiwi Farms. Now it's a Patreon-only server, and no one uses. I lost contact with the people that used to draw Sonichu stuff. What have I been doing these months? Doing commissions, mostly. Found a writer for Sonichu issues for like a month, and then he stopped paying me to draw them. I can't finish any comics that are not commissions. I think I experienced this before when I stopped drawing Sonichu stuff back then. Back then, I stopped drawing altogether for five months. Went back to draw when allowed me to draw Sonichu content again. Lately, my Sonichu content is getting violent and gory, and I am worried there is resentment and hate in my art. I know vent art is a healthy thing, but the level of violence is big. What I asked in the less secured return addresses letters was for your help, for your scripts to bring to life the 100 comics in the other dimension. Chris had previously mentioned that he wrote multiple comics in uh, his other goddess body in the other dimension. Basically, he said he doesn't need to draw Sanji comics in this dimension because he already drew them in the other dimension, and so after the merge, he will have access to them and be able to publish them, uh, which basically means that there will never be any more Sanju again. Uh, but now Helena wants to know the uh, the events of those comics so that she can actually draw them here. I can draw from four Sonic styled pages to 12 if I work hard enough. I can do this. Please trust me to make them a reality. I will not profit from them. 
It means no selling them or charging people for seeing them would get leaked anyway. My idea? To create an audience on Comic Furry. Taptastic and Webtoons kicked my Sonichu content off. That says Comic Fury. I don't know why I write it as furry. Of the official continuation of Sonichu. I know I asked you before, but I have the feeling that now is the moment. You can open another PayPal by then and gain some monetization. I just want to see Sonichu comics and be able to do commissions in that style when asked. But mainly, I want to see the comics here. Either way, this letter is probably going to get leaked, so don't tell me anything you want to keep private. Save that for the DMs. I don't usually pray, but I hope what is fair happens. Good luck, Chris. Helena. Now, uh, this letter did not get leaked. Helena posted it herself on Twitter. But yeah, um, Chris giving Helena a synopsis of the story and her drawing them is probably the closest we will ever get to an actual continuation of Sonichu. Chris's response, June 1st, hey Helena, I had attempted to write you less than a month ago. Enclosed is a photocopy of the original returned letter. That's the one that we read before, wow. I had received all of your letters, including the one Travis had forwarded to me. Shortly after sending that one, don't know who Travis is, I'm guessing it's Eels and Eggman. New details, firstly, I appreciate the updates. Thank you. Second, I offer confirmations to you. The violent drawings you've made are and have been precursors for telling the violent and spontaneous combustion death to come, and have come, upon the toxic individuals of 1218 Earth. You may as well draw death pieces of Sockness and Vladimir Putin as well on that note. Also, now is the time. I can tell what happened. I've written in more detail in a recent Goddess Log page that I shall personally share online after my safe return to the Solitude Temple as for known. I have had foreknown about the betrayal plans from Bella, Noel, as well as Sockness, long before even June 2021. And the gods and goddesses, Magichan and the others and I, conferred and made the plan for the best and most safe outcome for I and the good and neutral ones to be collectively shifted to the recombined Earth of Universe 1C211987, and to divine retribution for those that had failed the test from the fixed leak of July 30th, 2021. So Chris knew that Bella was going to betray him, and that Noel was going to betray him, and that Jacob Sockness was evil, and he did it anyway. He's been saying this for a while, this is nothing new. I confirm unto you, in direct honesty, that it was purely big talk from I. No sex was had between Barbara and I. All that happened was simple, soul bonding, cuddling, hugs, and cheek and forehead kisses, nothing more. In the soul bonding and talking, I had made great effort to re-strengthen her mental- her mental mentality. I had made great effort to re-strengthen her mentality and emotions through talking and getting her to recall her past in storytelling. Also, I divinely did heal and cleanse her of her sins and regrets. Very much similar to what happened between Barabbas and I, I meaning the actual Jesus in the Bible, before Pilate back in my past Book of Life off and on that crucifix. I was to be betrayed and jailed. And it, oh, now I get it. Now I get why he keeps seeing that he foresaw Bella betraying him and that going to jail was what was meant to happen. It's because that is actually what happened with Jesus. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him, and he let it happen anyway because that's what needed to happen for, like, the best of mankind. Jesus needed to be put to death and like after being jailed. So when Chris is calling himself Jesus, that's... It's not just that he, like, only has entertainment from the Bible in jail. Chris is comparing himself to Jesus... Because, because this story is what actually happened to Jesus. This is... <laughs> I can't believe I'm just realizing this. This is fantastic. Wow. That makes, like, so much more sense. Chris, Chris Chen is Jesus. I was to be betrayed and jailed anyway. My testimony not credible to the judge and modern day verse Jerusalem year 40 AD lawyers and legal system, neurotypical script followers like unwoke sleep or NPCs, I don't know. Any testimony from Barbara rendered moot and unaccounted due to her age. Bella's leak video rendered moot due to her own confession of faking. Uh, I'm pretty sure that did not happen. Unless I missed something big, I don't think Bella said that the leak video was fake. The leak video was tampered with, but uh, Bella never said that it was, like, false. A massive number of false witness and testimony from the comment sections and all, and no eyewitnesses to the facts, obviously. Okay, so he's saying that Barbara, if Barbara testified that these things actually happened, then they should not be counted as true because she has dementia. So if it's actually Chris's opinion that Barb has dementia, 
then that makes it worse if you actually did these things. So yes, I went with the flow and let the toxic ones stew, and I got a vacay from those demonic left behind ones. Ha, joke's on them. It's safer up here. Good luck with the comment section and toxic minority. Rainbow Dash. That's my favorite Rainbow Dash quote. Also, to let ye know, the reason why my most recent jail photo looked sad, it was because on the morning of the day before my return to this jail, to put it blunt and short for now, the staff in One Hickory at Redacted in Redacted, interesting, literally had me pinned and recreated the Pin Me Down event from 4th grade, minus the chokehold, to a T, complete with a full photogenic post-trauma stress disorder moment that also made a full deja vu of it. So he's saying he got pinned down by the hospital staff at the, at the mental hospital he was at. But I don't know if that's because he acted up and they had to, like, restrain him, or if it was part of his, like, therapy and he got pinned down. Should any of the staff in particular, I'm, I'm gonna censor that, this person's name, who instigated the event, still be around after the completion of the collective shift in my second coming, I shall sue the facility. 99% of all the staff there have been divinely marked as toxic as well as cursed. Anyway, do look forward to the first video of mine after all this not long from now. Be safe and well, with love, and you have never been forgotten, Helena and Jeffrey and Pikachu. So that was the Helena letter, but it's not the last letter we're going to be talking about because Chris actually also wrote a letter to Eels and Eggman. So that is the last one that we're going to be talking about today. Firstly, by the time you read this letter, you will have already received a letter addressed to Helena. So, in confirmation to you, mail from March and April 2022 have not been received. All of your other letters have been received. So, uh, from the months where he was in the uh, mental hospital, he did not get any letters from Eels and Eggman. If I had a nickel for every letter Eels and Eggman sent me, I'd be well over a dollar richer. Secondly, do not worry about trying to send me money through the jail at this point, for I shall be returning home not long after from writing this letter. We're actually going to touch upon that in a minute after I'm done with this letter. Thirdly, your questions and the rumors. The address book of mine is separate from the goddess log pages, and I have absolutely no intention to dox anyone. I don't know what that's referring to. I know that the goddess logs, um, basically he's claiming that he's keeping a diary of his, uh, his time in jail, both, like, the actual things that he's doing, and also his, uh, his trips into the other dimension, but I don't know what the address book is. The goddess log pages will be published in a book, Malachi and Revelations Out of Jail, Working Title, and Name Shall Be Changed to Protect the Innocent. Since you're scanning to send letters to Helena, you may already have read the fact, so I tell you direct as well in confirmation, I have never had sex with Barbara, that was purely big talk to divinely test everyone. You may share that underlined confirmation online if you wish, for I shall personally share the expanded full lot of details publicly after my safe return to the Sonichu Temple. The temporary transfer to Redacted was only to put me through restoration, to re-educate me on the courtroom terminology and proceedings. I was never in any unsafe activity, nor was I extremely sick or injured with any chemical drip. Uh, so now he's going to answer questions, but we don't know what the questions were. So his answer to question number one is, a uh, moot point now, but CVRJ, the, the jail he's in, accepts only cashier's checks made out by a bank teller at a bank or money orders made and sent from only a post office. And two, soul bonding is the bonding and union of auras, energy fields, between at least two individuals. Crystals are not required. One can soul bond with themselves in a reunion of your own soul. Um, we've talked about this before, but Chris believes that you can, uh, like, separate your soul in, like, Horcrux style, uh, but it's not a bad, like, it's not dark magic, it's actually a good thing. And he's actually talked before about how because he's, like, he's Jesus and God, and his soul is infinite, uh, when he splits his souls, it becomes two infinities, and thus it's the same as, like, just having a copy of him. Whereas if anyone else were to split their souls, then, like, each half would only be half of a soul. But because his is infinite, it's both a full soul. Um, so you can soul bond with yourself if you're reunifying your soul. And the separate energy manifested from your body's care point between the heart and solar plexus chakra points. If you have ever astral projected your soul out of your body, and your body managed to continue their functions at least on basic minimum during your absence with a manifestation of a soul copy manifested from your body's core, and find yourself communicating with that separate entity while in your body, then you'd understand the situation and relationship of a body and soul partner relationship. Other multi-dimensional soul bonding details will be talked about in the upcoming book. It's currently unclear whether or not this book is real, but I hope it is, because that would actually be a fun read. 
I had met Bella through Praetor. We knew this already. Uh, Bella made an animation uh, for Chris Chan Sonichu uh, through the Praetors. Who had slash has absolutely no correlations with your guard dogs, watchmen, or Noel the Judas. Uh, that is correct only to the point where uh, technically some of the watchmen knew of Bella's existence because they were talking to the Praetors and the Praetors like knew Bella. So like some watchmen members were in a discord server with Bella. But yes, yeah, she was not in the Watchmen or the Guard Dogs. Praetor had not the best thought process when screening her, but he's forgiven. The next couple answers are not useful to read because we don't know what the questions are. Obviously, they're on screen so you can see them yourself. Uh, but the most important thing he says is, Don't worry about sending me items in jail, for I shall be back at home at the Sanachu Temple not long from now anyway. I appreciate yours and Helena's support and the kindness of neutral good and good alignments, respectfully. Be safe and well. Mrs. Jesus Christ Chan Sanachu. So as far as Chris returning home, I'm going to read to you some paragraphs directly from the quickie, because it talks about the law and uh, basically how long they can hold Chris in jail. The maximum jail sentence for a misdemeanor incest charge in Virginia is one year, meaning that if Chris's charges are not upgraded to a felony status, he should be released no later than August 1st, 2022, even if the case is for some reason continued beyond that date. If his charges are upgraded to a felony, he could be facing a much longer sentence. The maximum sentence for felony incest is 10 years, and the maximum sentence for rape is life. If Barb is found to have been physically incapacitated, Chris will be placed on the sex offender registry for a minimum of 15 years when he gets out. In addition, if Chris is charged with a felony, his subsequent legal proceedings must be open to the public. So Chris saying that he'll be out soon could possibly be an indication that uh, among talks with him and his lawyer, his lawyer is telling him that this is going to be a misdemeanor and thus that he will be in jail no longer than August 1st. With that said, it could also just be that Chris believes he's having visions of the future where he's going to be set free soon. So it could mean everything and it could mean nothing, but basically all we can do at this point is wait. But we don't actually have to wait until August 1st to find out because Chris's next court appearance, or really his first court appearance because all the last ones have been continued, is going to be July 28th, which is four days before that one year anniversary. So on that date, we will actually know what's happening, hopefully. And as the quickie points out, even if it is continued past that date, Chris must be released on August 1st. So at the very least, he will be returning home at that time. If it is upgraded to a felony, then that might indicate to us that there is more evidence than what we've seen, or it might indicate to us that uh, Barb is actually in a worse state than we assumed. Either way, I will obviously keep you updated, and I'll try to have a video out around that time. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin for more updates, and of course you can subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you want to get further updates on this situation. I also just did a video about all the drawings that Chris did while he was in jail. He's actually been sending drawings to the Praetors and they're selling them online, so I kind of go through those and talk about them too, so that's going to be linked in the description if you want to watch that.